Mika Sekolah ini Terima kasih atas Mika Dan saya akan membahas dalam bahasa Inggris lah So Atas Mika, first of all, I want to congratulate the Sabah State Government for recording yet another positive I just plus So well done. Um, so I will start on my Alika constituency first. There are still many uh, unresolved issues pending uh, ratification funds. Yeah. So I want to call a few examples. Like Taman in Lorong Pungut, two drainage system plot due to the soil erosions cause a uh, flash flood to occur even during normal raining days. Uh, it has caused residents, uh, houses, and uh, toilet systems to plot. And I have made a few uh, times to DBK visits to DBK here and the relevant authority since 2015 uh, uh, but still hasn't got any uh, regular data on the drainage systems being carried out considering the old uh, drainage system is relatively a small one in those tamana. Then I proposed before uh, and I will propose it again to upgrade and to enlarge the drainage systems uh, so that it can accommodate more uh, water capacity and more water flow. You know, like residents at um, Baye Villa have requested for a worn down uh, Taman signage signage uh, to be replaced but still have not seen any new signages like uh, Lorong Kenawai 1 to 5, Seaview Lorong Kenawai uh, 3, Bukit, uh, Taye Court, you know, uh, Lee Wen Court, Lorong Kenawai 4, uh, Taman Sinaba uh, Baru and all that uh, all, all along those Jalan Tamais. Um, I submitted report, reports on uh, 18 August 2016 uh, those reports uh, and typically the reply akan disenaraikan dalam perutukan adun uh, I don't want to have I don't want to my debate points to be taken out of context uh, uh, the DPKK under the new media has actually performed at a very satisfactory, uh, satisfactory level so uh, we have received many good response from the public so I want to say good job and keep, uh, keep it up to our mayor but what I do want to know here is when exactly has the Likas or Fund been utilized yeah, because for well, yeah, now that uh, yeah, Ahmad for Omar has announced that the YB fund will be increased from a million annually to two million, so I'm sure the YB fund will be able to be smiling. Uh, you know, for sure, uh, but I'm not so sure about the racket whether it's smiling or not. Because in the Lucas, for example, like you see, in the Lucas, for example, for the past three years, uh, three million of the YB fund uh, has not seen any significant uh, uh, contributions to the people. So I, I don't know where the money has gone to. The three millions for the last three years. Um, I would like to suggest that uh, maybe the YB fund, if if uh, they have a report or reports on how the money was spent, to deliver a copy to the respective uh, opposition for me. I, I suppose they know already lah. So the only opposition don't know lah. So uh, send it to the opposition YB. Though we cannot decide, maybe we can decide on how the fund can be used. But at least we should be informed how the money uh, is used because we are the elected right for the constituency. Yeah. Um, uh, if have the uh, YB fund been put under our submissions, uh, I believe all those, uh, you know, the problems that I mentioned before will have already been rectified and uh, resolved. Um, I, re I also received many uh, complaints about growing numbers of illegal squatters, which I agree with our uh, learned colleague from uh, Inanna that uh, there are a lot of uh, growing illegal squatters, yeah, not just in Inanna but also in the Dikas constituency. Yeah, there is a huge camp, like almost like an army camp really, you know, behind the Lika um, uh, Also behind the Taman Amoni, uh, Taman Chebaka. And also we have recorded us, uh, complaints of these illegal squatters um, along the Jalan to Big Kondo. And also near the uh, Hakka Hall, those areas uh, and behind it. So I noticed that the UK has actually been taking uh, hard actions to remove or to, to actually uh, provoke illegal squatters to make the KK City a much pleasant place. Uh, uh, I totally spoil it and just I would like to ask that the demol demolishing of the illegal squatters can be prioritized in uh, residential areas as well. Uh, like the castle. Because they have they have caused a lot of troubles and problems to nearby uh, neighborhood with rampant breakings, you know, uh, uh, rubbishes and then uh, electricity theft and all that. You know, they create a lot of problems to the to the neighborhoods. Um, okay, that is speak up. Uh, like, in this budget, of course, I can't help to notice yet another change uh, allocations for water department this year, uh, infrastructure ministry. So in the um, the speech, uh, Yang Yang Wang Bu Wan said that this one point two five eight million will be allocated in the two thousand seventeen budget to support the upgrading of infrastructures 
and basic amenities across the state and assume it will include the upkeep and the setting up of the laundry area uh, to continue the provisions of treated water supply 572.87 million has been located next year. Um, with the water uh, recent you know, uh, shocking revelations are the case uh, I'm sure that the water department must be on their toes Need to say, as far as the transparency and the accountability is concerned, uh, the people are watching very closely. Um, then I have been told that uh, the state of um, Sabah currently has uh, 83 water treatment plants, big and small. Big and small, like 83, uh, big and small ones, from, uh, measuring from 2 MLD to 100 MLD, something like that. And 71 of them, 71 of these uh, uh, treatment plants have either been fully or partially privatized for a period of up to 20 years, more or less. Huh? So I would like to, the government to confirm whether this is true or not. Um, I want to know why uh, the Sabah Water Department wanted to outsource most of the, if not all, the water treatment plants built under the National Key uh, Result Areas, uh, NKRA, and Government Transformation Program, GTP, to cooperation outside, uh, outside the government, maybe they privatize it and outside, outsource it. So my sources again uh, inform me that the Sabah Water Department representing the, uh, the Water State Government has signed an agreement with many companies uh, uh, and one of them was actually known as the Yuda Company Central Pahat to operate and maintain and manage river intakes and water treatment plant at Tuaran, Sipitang, Bofut for a monthly lump sum fee of 1.956364 I repeat um, uh, 1.956 million a month uh, no, uh, yeah a month a monthly lump sum fee that will translate into a staggering uh, yearly sum of approximately 24 million for one contract for 20 years. That's one contract, and then that's 480 million total contract sum. Um, so I'm sure this is uh, under the state jurisdiction. Uh, it must have nothing to do with uh, KK, uh, KKL, KKW, and uh, Can you repeat that one? 1.1? Uh, sorry? Can you repeat that? 1.98 million for one? Yeah, one year one. 1.956 million, approximately 2 million, approximately 2 million. We need the government to confirm whether all this... Uh, is that per year or per month? That's, uh, that's per month. Monthly lump sum. Monthly lump sum. Yeah. So a year is 24 million. Pro approximately, uh, approximately 24 million. Yeah. Um, so again, uh, now I think, uh, whether we forecast, so whether the ministers know about this, Contracts, uh, because this is all I think I believe is under the state jurisdiction. Okay, yeah. I guess it. I don't need really us. Uh, sebelum uh, saya uh, membuat penjelasan uh, tentang persoalan yang dikemukakan oleh Amerika, uh, saya mau tahu dan speaker pertama, kok tres yang dipakai oleh Amerika ini uh, dibenarkan kan biasanya? Ahli Dewan Menangan Negeri untuk masuk dalam Dewan yang mulia ini, kodnya must be that. Must be that. That's it, that code of Dewan. Pakaian. Pakaian. <laughs> Saya nampak pakaian dia lebih kurang macam artis atau singa. Before, before I answer the persoalan ini. Next time, please don't use that one. That yeah, the S.U. told me already, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, sebagai penjelasan kepada persoalan, I think something is mislead, uh, mislead by you, uh, Arunika. Kerajaan ini sahabat telah meluluskan sebanyak 9 kontrak package operasi pengendalian dan penyelenggaraan ONN, which is really according to perolehan kerajaan. Logi rawatan air pada pihak-pihak syarikat yang dilantik dengan kadar yuran bulanan yang ditetapkan untuk tempo 20 tahun. Kontrak ONN ini Logi rawatan air, ini, ini keperluan logi-logi Jabatan jabatan Air Negeri Sabah telah mula dilaksanakan secara outsource Pada tahun 2009 Iaitu bagi operation and maintenance of the Stagalio Riba Ini permulaan uh, sebagai pilot project Tubuh, matikan, matikan, tubuh The Stagalio Riba Intact Dam and Water Treatment Works Sanakan Sebab-sebab ONN ini diberikan secara perkhidmatan outsourcing adalah kena masalah kekurangan sumber tenaga kerja untuk mengendalikan logi berkenaan yang didapati oleh pihak Jabatan Air itu sendiri. 
sumber tenaga yang cukupi adalah perlu bagi memastikan memastikan bekalan rawatan air yang berterusan dan yang boleh dipercayai untuk membekalkan air kepada penduduk-penduduk di kawasan-kawasan yang terlibat. Pada masa yang sama, PHDNS tidak dibenarkan untuk melantik tenaga kerja baru sementara menunggu keputusan mengenai pengkongkratan jabatan air yang disalah. Antara paedah-paedah yang diperoleh daripada kontrak perikmatan mengenai adalah seperti berikut. Satu, memandangkan kadar yuran tidak berubah sepanjang tempo kontrak maka didapati kos adalah terkawal. Kedua, penggantian alat-alat perabot dan komputer dibuat sekali dalam lima tahun. Kos bagi pembelian kimia adalah terkawal. Amalan yang diterima pakai oleh Kementerian Keuangan Negeri menunjukkan bahwa sebaik saja cadangan bagi pangkup pengoperasian dan penyelenggaraan roti air diterima oleh Kementerian Kerajaan Kementerian Keuangan Negeri ianya adalah dikemukakan pada pihak jabatan air dan pihak Kementerian Pembangunan Infrastruktur dan diperakukan bahwa amat signifikan dan memberi manfaat kepada rakyat seluruhnya dengan pengoperasian dengan penyelenggaraan melalui penyelenggaraan ini kepada syarikat-syarikat yang berkelayakan. Terima kasih. Menurut Lekas, sudah belum? Belum, seluruh stasi jadi. Terus ya? Terus. Nanti lah, kita teruskan saja lah. Sebaru stasi yang ada memang belum ini. Oke, so, oke, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Mama Menteri. So, di, um, So you confirm. So, maksudnya you confirm that they are the, you know, the Jabatan has actually outsourced. Yes, yeah. outsourced. Confirm. So, can you yes, confirm the so figure? Yes, because due to the kekurangan tenaga pakar dalam Jabatan Air. So that's very for money, ah, the twenty four million. Yes, very for money. No. Up to now, it's approved. It's very for money for the rakyat. Very for You can see okay. that they also uh, functioning well. And so they, they you are confirming also you the you that central bank is the company, ah. I think the figure that you give it now, I think it's wrong. You mistake. We'll get the, I will get the, the, the right thing okay. for you. Alright, thank you. So I'll move on. I'll move on, yeah. Thank you. So the, uh, okay, I'll move on. So now, from the, still on the water uh, topic, I would like to uh, actually request the government again to reduce the water tariff. Uh, because the water tariff actually increased drastically from 90 cent per uh, thousand liters to 2 ringgit, 10 cent. More than 100 percent uh, increment, especially for the commercial. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, I would like to, uh, Ask the government to see, uh, since you say it's uh, value for money, uh, I think if we can reduce, uh, government can actually take care of our own uh, water treatment. Uh, maybe we can reduce some of the, the outsourcing contraction, some uh, actually reduce the, uh, the uh, water, uh, what's that called, the, uh, the tariff, water tariff. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, actually, uh, by talking about water, I was thinking, just now I was uh, informed by the, uh, because our uh, uh, manager is still here. I was informed the uh, the some young uh, Ahmad Bomba was saying that the the before the law Banda Menteri never actually met up with uh, the Ketua Menteri, right? That's why uh, yeah, uh, young Ahmad Bomba Ketua Menteri said that. But then uh, isn't it true that the uh, the uh, law Banda uh, Menteri actually meet up with the uh, the the Menteri Law Banda the Rekat uh, Sabah? Meaning to get at this uh, regular meeting, because I was told. That maybe they haven't made up with the Ketua Menteri, but they made up with the, the, the Ministry in the Rural Development in Sabah. Lah. So, Sabah lah. so if, there, if there was actually meeting, meetings of them going up, isn't that uh, also the market from the government? Yeah. Uh, maybe you can reply later, I'm going to reply now. Okay. I'll go on, I'll talk to the speaker. Uh, okay. Now the, the, the foreign workers are systems again. Yeah. No, I have raised this problem before for many times and it seems to me that you know, the government is simply not taking this, uh, the issue seriously. The, uh, I propose to the government to lift or relax the quota uh, restriction uh, limit for foreign workers from Philippines and Indonesia. The main problem we face by the traders now was not getting enough approval from the applications of uh, foreign workers due to the foreign uh, the quota limitations. So now is uh, now it's really the time to reveal and to relax the quota system. But even associations um, like the Kinyo Chinese Chamber, you know, Saba Restaurant Fellowships uh, associations, they have asked to relax it to remove. The, the quota limitations many times. Now, now the current system has also made it difficult for private businesses to maintain their, uh, their workforce legally. It has also made it very difficult for young entrepreneurs to realize their new business opportunity because the system is not flexible and too expensive for uh, new businesses to fork up. Um, I have proposed before and to give the business owners an option to apply for quarterly quarterly work permits and renew the 
the permits four times a year so that to reduce their, their, their uh, initial capital outlay. But then uh, the government hasn't done anything. Uh. So if the government don't show enough care about this problem and allow it to manifest, and I believe, and I can tell, it's either more businesses goes down or they will have no choice but to employ illegal workers. Yeah, so uh, please, the government, please look into it. Uh, with a lot more care, sir. Um, well, now, uh, a total of the um, budget of 10.38 million will be allocated for fishery subsectors in order to increase the production of fish and fishery products with the aim of achieving 423,000 metric tons per year from the budget. So, but there is a major factor threatening the Sabah fishery sector for quite a long time, which eventually can kill our fishery industry if we do not deal with it seriously. Um, that is the illegal fishing activities you know, uh, in Sabah water, especially the Vietnam boats, fishing boats. You know, they come here and support everything under our waters. Um, you know, I don't understand, I don't want to uh, leak it, but our, our government is giving the impression that they continue to take these things quite lightly as far as the, the Vietnam boats concerned, whether legally or illegally, catching in our water with local licenses. You know, many were spotted, but the stakeholders will wonder why the Meridian hasn't spotted that. You know, a lot of the photos have been uploaded, you know, a lot of the videos have been uploaded, taken, uh, shared through WhatsApp and, and Facebook, but there, there hasn't been a lot of um, arrest. So, some may have been uh, apprehended by the Meridian, but no one knows what happened to them. They seem to get away from it. They seem to get away from the arms of law and it becomes more and more rampant now. More and more of them coming to uh, what? So I want, I want to call on the state government to, en to enforce uh, restrictions on foreign uh, fishermen to come into Sabah water to fish in order to protect our resources for future generations. I suggest that the government employ the same policy as the uh, Indonesia uh, and, and Sarawak in banning all foreign boats from the Sabah waters, which means that whether or not these fishermen were licensed Least license or they have license that as long as they are foreign uh, uh, boats, the marine authority should uh, can apprehend them as long as they are foreign. I think that's very uh, that's one way, uh, just like the Indonesia, just like um, the Java. I think the only way to resolve this matter is the government must show uh, enough good, strong, determined political will. Because with even with the rampant presence of this boat in our water now, they will say that these fishermen are licensed. I think there's one marine team officer even said that we have signed, signed an agreement which of course the minister have denied you know, uh, but then to that extent you know, even, um, uh, even, if, even if the authorities do revoke the, the license to list it to these uh, illegal fishing boats no attempt is made to establish the owners and the mechanism through which the license was uh, obtained that means we still don't know who are the owners uh, what, punishment, what punishment to these owners and how do they actually list it out? We still don't know. So, I think, um, and, and now even more uh, interesting, you know, there's, uh, recently there was this, uh, uh, Vietnam boss was being caught, confirmed by today's newspaper. It hasn't been coming to the newspaper, but today the Marine Corps actually uh, had an officer who replied to my statement uh, that there's a Vietnam boat with a cargo license. Now with cargo license, not fishing boat license anymore, they use cargo license, but they, they illegally go and fish in the water. You know, yeah, I've been informed by the, uh, the, the, that by the fishery stakeholders that the Vietnam boat was actually apprehended by the authorities um, on the 13th or 14th of November. Then these Vietnam boats were believed to be kept in Marine Deep, Spanga Jetty. And then until the 19th of November, the boat was not there anymore. The boat was not there anymore. So we don't know, like, no news uh, reporting the arrest and the outcome. We don't really know what happened. You know, uh, then the Vietnam boat was actually caught with the fishes. Uh, on board and its license is actually operating under cargo license STW 00332K. I repeat, STW 00332K. And this is a cargo license that believed to be issued under the Jakartan Lao Tawau. So I really want the government to actually investigate into it and explain thoroughly uh, who is the owner and what is the penalty and the punishment for renting and leasing license to Vietnam boats. Um, yeah, okay, I'll move on. Okay, uh, and I also also like to uh, ask for proposals for government to allocate more funds in the coming um, uh, budget to actually upgrade the KK port at Sabah. You know, because issues have now emerged within the fishing communities in KK that they don't even want boats from outside the Sabah ports, meaning Kuda, Landatu, Tawau, to dock in KK, meaning the boats from fishing boats from Kuda or from somewhere else, Landatu, they don't want them to come over here to KK to dock because. Um, 
there is the concern is there is not enough court facilities now to cater to the other books. So it's overcrowded. So I would like to ask the government to look into the issues because that creates a lot of um, uh, angers amongst the fishing community, which is not good for the, the future development of the fishery uh, for summer. So I would like the government to look into it and resolve the issues. Okay, Dr. Speaker. You know, um, uh, Yang Ahmad Bahamad has actually announced the, uh, the, the, the Sabah Structure Plan 2030, uh, the 2033 will uh, speed up the development plans approval. And, and he made a similar promises on the 12th April 2010, uh, where he quote as saying that the state government will come up with a refined uh, guidelines to speed up the approval process. Uh, so I don't see any refined uh, guidelines now um, since uh, 2010, and the approval process of development plans have it speed up for the last couple of years. And I think if you ask the developers, and you know, I know like, the answer is that a definite no. So we want to see uh, more concrete and solid, transparent action plans. How the planning department and authorities can actually resolve current tapes and also speed up uh, approvals for developments. Okay, um, hey Borneo, hey Borneo, uh, it's a uh, you know, the governments have been singing highly of it. Of hey Borneo, and I would like to bring up one serious matter to the attention of the government that there are uh, quite a number of landowners along the stretch between uh, Penampang uh, and Papa that have actually encountered issues whereby the contractors have actually entered their lands and clear their crops but they have no idea how much would the government actually pay for their lands or compensate okay though it is under land acquisition I understand because of pen bonio it's under land acquisitions but the deal process must be followed so the landowners now feel that they have been bullied and so i ask the government to look into this issue seriously with a sense of urgency uh, another issue i would like to bring another issue to the attention of our local government uh, and, and housing uh, ministry that is uh, to, to on follow up, uh, follow up issues. Uh, when will the SSB capital contributions reductions be announced? Because our minister, uh, minister has actually promised to reduce the SSB capital contributions. I think about two years ago, two years back. And also, he, uh, our ministers have also um, said that they will get the draft KK plan 2020 and structure plan to be gadgeted. Uh, uh, you know, to be gadgeted. Uh, of course, uh, endorsed by the idea. So I would like to follow up, follow up, follow that one up. Um, okay, the, uh, the other one is the uh, the open space. The open space, um, yeah, reverted. I would like to propose to the Sabah State Government to de-gadget the front beach land reserved for public parks at Coastal Highway Sambulan and to retain it for public usage. You know, the Sabah uh, State Government to respect uh, should, uh, should actually comply, not, not say that they don't comply, uh, but um, I haven't seen any notice of the, uh, the land being de from a public space, being published for public to actually participate in the public uh, consultation process. So I might overlook, so hopefully the, the ministers can uh, address the issues. The essential thing is that we should get, uh, all focus is that, uh, we should all focus on is that the public should be uh, allowed to have their objections heard. So that, that part, I, maybe I missed it, but please, the ministers can address it. You know, and the, the other question is, what alternative would the government replace this open space with to compensate for KK residents' loss of 4.5 acres of public space? That's the 4.5 acres of public space. And I would like to ask, is that the, the open space now being reverted? Um, is it part of the 10% open space of Sutra Harbour original development plan? Because, you know, uh, it's just how uh, uh, Yu Yang has actually praised that uh, you know, Tanja Eco Development is a very good project. There are a lot of open space, and he actually quoted Sutra uh, the, uh, the uh, development. But Sutra development last time promised that there would be a lot of open space given back to the public before it was developed. But now being developed, the impression was a lot of public don't go there to use their public space anymore. And now there's this public space being reverted and don't know for what purpose. Um, is it part of the, the, the Sutra original development plan? So if it is, then what's the implications for our Tanjo uh, Aru equal development future, uh, development future open space? What's the guarantee um, to the public have that the open space will not be taken away just like this one? So this is a quite, quite very important uh, issues. I would like the, uh, the government to actually address on it. And I, again, I urge the, the government to reconsider. I mean, 
to de-gadget it again, to put it back for public usage and develop the land. Yeah. Okay, um, Dr. Speaker, I would like to um, ah, I would like to raise one uh, very important issue. You know why it has uh, nothing, the government has not, not, not the government, uh, the ministries has not, uh, nothing has been done to, to or acted to a irresponsible developer. This one is huge. You know, um, I, want, I want to ask the government why has the irresponsible developer by the name of Dato Raymond, don't, don't, don't give a, the surname uh, uh, there, <laughs> Dato Raymond has gone stock free you know, for breaking a lot of laws. You know, I was told that he was a uh, West Malaysian and has cheated many Samahans. Not only that, no, he did not complete the, the uh, the one Suleiman condo uh, project, of course, the, uh, now our Kuruntian is actually handling it uh, well, and it has caused much distress to many house buyers. He also cheated many innocent Sabahs into buying kiosk space, and I'm sure I'm going to tell you the kiosk space in uh, one, uh, one volume, uh, which is not permitted by the law, which is not permitted by the law and should not have happened under the supervision of the government. It should not have happened. But now that the... Uh, Plus, we can... For our private vision. I think other leaders have uh, is very well worse and also I think you know a lot of bylaw. But you should know this is between the buyers and the developer. What do you mean by under the supervision of the what do you call the local authority? Just like you are having a house, you want to rent a house to uh, uh, what you call somebody. That is not under the supervision of the, the local authority because that's in between the buyers and the, what you call the, the developer. So don't always misleading us or misleading the public saying that this is under the supervision of the local authority. There's nothing to do with the local authority. You must understand that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, maybe I'll rephrase, uh, rephrase it, yeah? The, uh, there's, it's actually the, uh, the government's uh, bylaw that uh, how there's already a law how the, the, uh, the chaos will be uh, you know, monitored and Manage. Um, there will be, first of all, there will be a DB to approve first for every development how many kiosks that you can rent out in every uh, shopping mall. So they have to stick uh, uh, strictly to it. Then they could have applied for another DB to increase those kiosks if the local authority approve it. So if the local authority has not approved it, but then they continue to uh, increase the numbers of kiosks. Uh, what I meant, the situation meaning to say that. Uh, Maybe the enforcement unit officer should have uh, noticed it much earlier because they have been left um, there operating illegally some the long one, long term, some three years, the short term much one year for quite some time really. Um, that's what I meant. And then they also the uh, the, the the time and planning, I think the uh, DPK by law whereby the structures can never be uh, put on common place, a permanent subject, which is also um, clearly stated in the law, the bylaws. And then it's actually quite obvious. Yeah, there, are, there are a lot of commonly structured um, chaos inside the, uh, the, the common space of the, the one volume which was never on any approved DP. So if, um, not the opposition, but if you would have put in more efforts and, and going down to the ground, you could have realized it and noticed and perhaps you could have stopped it, uh, uh, that thing from happening. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Um, uh, my clarification, Dr. Speaker. Do you know when you submit a DP, the local authority will process it and approve it, okay? After the DP approved it, then you construct it. Then you get your OC, okay? If you have submitted uh, during the DP stage, the local authority approved it, yes, that is uh, what you call the genuine kiosk or whatever um, store you want to put it. After you get an OC, those area which have no kiosk one is considered to be common property, right? Okay. Now, who own the common properties? Uh, the shop owners, I would like to say. Uh, yes, you are right. But now, the developer sell to the, what you call, the other people in the common property. That's nothing to do with the local authority, right? Not exactly. The common property one, you want to you want to sell it to other people. If you had a lawyer enter agreement between the developer and the buyers, that nothing to do with the local authority. Yeah, but the, the law clearly says you cannot. 
If, if you if you sell it, we cannot stop you because that is your 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 what you call it. You want to sell it, you want to cheat the people. It's your problem. It's not a local authority problem, right? No, but then the law says you cannot. It's just like if I if I want to sell whatever in my house, if it's an illegal items, it doesn't matter whether it is illegal. But the local authority will not interfere with your sell and purchase. Then who should interfere? Then? Who should no, you will have the professional. Advise your buyer, advise your seller, advise your developer. There's nothing to do with the local authority. Because this is a sell and purchase. How can you say we go to interview you? I mean, I mean your, your sell and purchase business. There's nothing to do with us. I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can accept that excuse. Uh, uh, because how can there's already a law uh, being written and to, enacted to protect the, the Which law? Which law? Uh, well, okay. I will Tell me which one. The, okay, don't worry, don't worry. I will definitely give it to you. You know what? Because I didn't have it with me, but it's actually a written answers from the demo itself. I asked the demo. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so I'll give it to you. Don't worry. I sure, don't have it. No I don't problem. remember it offhand. But I'll give it to you because it's a written answers from the demo with the itself. So I, get, I will give them. Yeah. I don't have it now. I don't have it. Okay, but I'll pass it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. No, I'm not trying to do any finger pointing now. I think the, the finger pointing situation is too late, really, now. Um, you know, we know who is the culprit. Correct. Okay. Yes, so like this, the people is cheated. It's not us. It's correct. You are blaming the local authority, asking we take into interference of this matter. Hey, sorry, man. This is between the legal legal legality. Nothing to do with us. You want to sue, you sue. The buyer can sue. Sue the developer. Yeah, but then. is that? I okay. No, I can. I prima your 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 reason, huh? So that's why I work with the, uh, the newly appointed uh, one b management to actually hold dialogues with both the chaos and the, the shop owners in sake of a makeable, uh, you know, holistic baby situation for all the stakeholders. But it's very, very hard, like I said, because the law don't, uh, not be even the mayor has actually come to a statement and said, oh, I cannot give you a license. I cannot prove it because it's not legal. You know, in the, state, in the statement. But I can show you a statement if you want. I can show you a statement if you want. Yeah, then, I understand the difficulties faced by the victimized uh, chaos operators, but the situation has per persisted for a long time. To be honest, I feel helpless, to be honest, not to speak Because at this lockdown situation, which, uh, you know, it, it's unfair to shop owners if they allow the illegal players to continue to operate in the long term uh, permanent basis. But then at the same time, I have sympathy for the victimized uh, chaos owners. So now my proposal, uh, now my proposal is to ask the government. The government should can or uh, help to act on behalf of the victimized chaos business. These, these chaos, a lot of them, uh, you know, not really, uh, Financially too sound, financially too sound, not, not, not to undermine them, but not financially too sound, and they don't have the knowledge. So the, uh, the I would propose that the government to actually act on behalf of these victimized uh, chaos operators against this datu. I don't know whether to take should take off the datu like that. This one, the children too many sabans should take it off and restore the justice to these uh, chaos buyers. I would like the government to help them. To help them. You know we. Let's speak. I think the. <laughs> Until Lucas, you must understand. I think you have a lot of this uh, learned friend. Huh? They don't know the by law. The local authority has no local standards to take the developer to the court. Only the buyers have the right, have the local standards to bring the whoever sell it to you to the court. Yes. We have no local standards. You can go for that. We definitely will be backfired from the developer. Okay, you, you must understand that, right? Yeah. No, assist them. Not the government suing the, the developer. Assist the buyers. Assist the buyers in many ways. Many ways. If the government wants to assist them, they can assist them in many ways to actually uh, restore justice for them. Help them. Assist. Not the government suing the, the developers. Then legally, legally, I think uh, for this victim. To take action to the developer, I think that's the most proper way to do it. Because DBK now at the present moment will not take any action to these people because we don't know the legality of these people in the mall. Whether the accused is legally, because if you sell it to me, I have this other purchase agreement, I'll go to seek for the what you call the, the developer. Hey, you sell this thing to me. Whether I have a stand or not, in the most. 
They say the legal problem we haven't solved yet. DBKK will not take action yet. Yeah. You must understand that. Yeah, that's what we say. Yeah, AG ma, AG can help. <laughs> but anyway, we're not like us. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll do that. Tell us. Yeah. Very fast. Okay, now we'll touch on the the ASCOM. I don't know the talk much about ASCOM because you know the kind of things happening. You know, broad daylight in Sabah waters continue. And, uh, you know, it's nothing. It's like almost nothing shocking. Really, we're so immune to it. And we get so used to it, really, you know, to the data like that. So the kidnappers now have total disregard for the existence of ESCOM uh, uh, and the Sabah security uh, forces. So now it's very sad, you know, because ESCOM now becomes like an office just to confirm, hey, are they kidnapping? Betul betul dia berlaku, ya betul. Okay, then they just confirm the news whether they are kidnapping or uh, abductions. Me, I'm going to be very sad. You know, so uh, of course uh, I have already uh, proposed for the uh, the ESCOM to disband and let the defence take over, but of course. Not taken in good light, lah, by, by the state government for the time being. So I would like to propose now, uh, because I've heard some uh, some proposals of uh, actually weaponize those uh, fishing boats, give them weapons to protect themselves. Uh, but I would think that um, maybe a better better proposal would be to station commandos and also soldiers randomly at different different uh, fishing boats every day to, to actually you know counter back to actually counter back those fireballs. That could maybe be uh, effective. Maybe you can try. I think that is actually quite one good. Uh, uh, Chadangana. Okay, the other one is uh, the special locations. Now I realize that there's actually this special locations of 52 million. And I'm going to say this is a good idea you know, because um, if I've helped many neglected, you know, categories like the, um, you know, the youth developments and sport, um, you know, they are also for the uh, women associations, they are also for OKU, uh, Sabah Welfare Service Department, some of the NGOs who produce our people, you know, caring societies. This, these are all very good, you know, these are um, good ideas and to actually help many neglected uh, categories. But I must say that it also looks like an election budget. Uh, so I hope this is not election motivated. Uh, but I mean, that's beside the point. Uh, I would like to know how would the people apply for it? Like, the, um, like maybe micro entrepreneurs, young people who want to run uh, small and media operators, uh, including vi uh, village entrepreneur development programs. Like how, how do this uh, public actually come to apply for it? Hopefully the, the government can enlighten us. And also if I may suggest, uh, there are actually nine categories here. I would like to suggest another category group. The category group, because this group of uh, um, uh, seemingly, uh, the impression is that they are always being neglected. Uh, they are, that is to set up, uh, no, if I may suggest is that a fund to be set up also to help the Sabah athletes, you know, training, so that they can train to be the best athletes and maybe set up faculties to assist those who have actually achieved great things for Sabah. And also, um, after they have achieved great things, maybe can train, become trainers, become a coach, or some, some sort of pensions or salary for people who have achieved things so they can so that our athletes can train, fully train for to achieve great things for someone. And this this is one uh, one thing I think that maybe these special locations can, uh, can look into. Um, now, last week, last week, I would like to congratulate the government for uh, wanting to protect, you know, more forest reserves in Sabah. Uh, we show that Sabah, the Sabah government is actually committed on conservation of efforts of forests in the, in the state. It's well done. Thus, uh, yes, I can, you know, I, I come across a book and I have to bring the attention of this book to our Yamaha uh, and so and also the Ordon White House. Because I believe this will undermine the government efforts and also uh, achieve minister efforts and actually it brings change, you know, to the, to, to the general Sabah hands. Um, the, in fact, undermining is actually an understatement. It is a claim by the book, uh, author Lucas Shaman, uh, Lucas Shaman, the book, that actually claim, not a legal, he claim that our young Mount Muhammad has actually enriched himself, become millionaires, you know, through money lobbying, granting of uh, uh, timber concessions and export license to Sabah. That is a book uh, that you cannot, why do I bring this book up to the to the one? It's because this book, I actually bought it in Malaysia. You know, I actually bought this book in Malaysia, you know. Um, I bought it in Times, and the Times plastic, you know, here. I bought it in Times, and the receipts, I just bought it early. I just bought it early this month. And there's actually graphs, you know. There's actually graphs of how the money was being, you know, how the money was uh, rolling around the world in Zurich, in Hong Kong. And it mentioned the names of our uh, young yeah, Muhammad very clearly. So I think this book is very, very vicious. Point 
With that, uh, I would like to uh, end my speech with a greeting to all the Christmas friends, uh, Christian, sorry, Christian friends, a happy Merry Christmas, and also a happy New Year to all. And again, terima kasih.